right, welcome back everyone. This is the Happy Toolbox and this week we'll be diving into another mid-journey specific tutorial. If you saw my tutorial on mid-journey last time, I really just touched on the surface level of everything. So I figured it would be really great to show you a few things I've learned in regards to text prompts on how you can get the most out of this tool. If you are not familiar with what mid-journey is, at a high level, it is an AI art generation tool or as I like to think of it, my buddy in brainstorming until it is my master. All right, if you are interested in these prompts, I am going to do my best to get through this fast and specifically write it out in a big old Google Doc so you can actually see what's going on and you don't have to blow up your screen to like 800% like some of these other Mid Journey videos. All right, let's get going. Okay, so as you can see, I have a giant futuristic robot roaming the desert as my text prompt. I just put that in. It gave me four alts. They all look like interesting robots, kind of in a stylized manner, um, and they are all a square aspect ratio. So from here, to push the needle forward, maybe more towards where I envision this going, I'm going to do a few specific things to that text prompt. The first being messing with the aspect ratio. So how you do that, I'm just gonna pop this prompt into our text doc so you can see what's going on better. So we have a giant futuristic robot roaming the desert. How you define aspect ratio is you put dash dash AR for aspect ratio. And then after that space, you can put any aspect ratio you want that mid journey accepts. Sometimes really extreme ones, if they get larger than the, the DPI mid journey wants to deal with, it gets a little funky, but I can just change this to 16 by nine instead of square. You can do three by four, four by three, two by three, et cetera. And you just kind of put it in this format right here. So if I were to then copy this, now that I have my 16 by nine aspect ratio in, backslash imagine, paste that in. Let's see what happens. Okay, so before we had our square aspect ratio and now we have our 16 by nine, which is looking awesome. So another thing I want to show you from here, specifically since we've gotten this really cool stylized look going on that Mid Journey chose for us, um, let's say I really like this bottom left corner one. So if I hit up res on our third one, so that's what U3 means, I'm going to up res it versus versioning it. I'm going to hit up res, it's gonna start thinking, up res this to a higher resolution. Okay, so there we go. We have our up piece of artwork. As you can see, it looks pretty cool, but you can notice there's a ton of detail in this thing that Mid Journey added, and that's part of up -resing. If I hit upscale to max, it will do that even further. Versus our original artwork, it was much more soft and painterly. And this is fully up to you and what you wanna do with your artwork. To me, I really was liking kind of this painterly look, and when I up it, it's just way too much detail and there's all these strings and things in the sky. So the way you can combat that is by using something called uplight. So I'm gonna leave my same string, but I'm going to hit dash dash uplight. And you have to put that in your original prompt. And what that does, it'll kind of be a lower quality version in your originals as well. But more specifically, when you hit up res, it's going to have up light in the prompt and mid journey is going to take that into account and kind of do a lighter up res versioning of your artwork. There is this button light upscale redo, which is in a sense what up light is doing. But if you have up light included in your original prompt, you can basically do up lighting two times. So you could have up light in the original prompt, up res it, Mid Journey understands that uplight, and then the light upscale redo is a second uplight on top of that. So let's do that, but first I wanna show you another piece, which is, let's say I want to try and get back as best as possible to this robot because I really liked it. Now there are no absolutes in Mid Journey, so I might never ever get this guy again, but one way to try and get him is if I right click on my four grid, you can go to apps and say DM results. And basically mid journey will say, okay, you want all of those four images separated out. Here you go. This is a great way to kind of like save them as thumbnails if you want. But more importantly, what it does is it also gives you a seed number 
for the seed mid journey used to create these four images. So if I copy that seed and dive back into my Google Docs so you can see, I can do dash dash seed and then paste that number. And so that will attempt to use the same seed or understanding of how to generate these images. So now that I have my 16 by nine aspect ratio, I have my up light and I have my seed inside of this, I'm going to paste it back into mid journey. Backslash imagine, paste it in, hit enter. Okay, so as it's coming together, you can kind of see the seed is helping us get close to this. And once again, we're still in our 16 by nine aspect ratio and the up light really won't show itself until we up res this. But the seed is looking good to get something close to this image that we like. Look, I mean, damn, that's pretty close. The third one right here, that is almost exact. That's pretty crazy. Okay, so from here, I'm going to up res the third one again, just to see what the up light does. As you can see, our image that now has up light in it looks a lot more painterly, you know, like its legs are disappearing. There's kind of these paint strokes. There's not all that junk in the sky versus if you go back to our original, again, this was the original piece that didn't have anything in the sky, but when you up it, you got all of this crazy detail. It started adding grass, it started adding strings in the sky, started adding all these parts. So again, if this is what you want, that is great, but in my case, I want this painterly look, and I initially found it pretty frustrating that it would up and not look like the really cool image um, in the four up grid. So that is extremely handy. I'm pretty happy with where this is headed right now. Now the next thing I wanted to show you is how to add a weighted value to something, which is super helpful when you are trying to, you know, put a prompt in, you're typing the word blue or desert or something like that, and it's just really not picking up that part of your prompt because the prompt is really large or something like that. So in this case, it did really well. We have a giant futuristic robot roaming the desert. You know, we have a really good desert. We have a really good robot. Um, but let's just try and add a color or something in there and see what happens. So I'm going to paste our same prompt back in with the same seed, up light, AR-16, a giant futuristic robot, and then I'm going to put comma blue arms roaming the desert. So let's just see what happens here if I'm going to put blue arms. In my mind, you know, I want both of the robot's arms to be blue, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so as you can see, I put in blue arms. Now we have an entirely blue robot. We have a blue man. Um, it, it pretty drastically changed the scene, not to our liking. So what I'm going to do instead, blue arms roaming the desert. Okay, so this is the prompt I had just put in, um, but what I'm going to show you is that weighted format. And the way you do this is you put a colon, colon, and then a value next to any of your prompts, as long as they are kind of separated out. So here I'm going to put colon, colon, futuristic robot. I'm gonna put this up to two, because I really wanted to focus on this futuristic robot. Blue arms, I'm going to do colon, colon, 0 0.05. Because I kind of wanted to not overtake the whole scene. And an important note here is the default value of each of these prompts, if you don't do any of this, is set to one. So in this case, oops, I had an extra dot there. So in this case, I could just leave roaming the desert because it's going to have a value of one. But what I'm trying to do is say, hey, focus on the robot, the blue arms, don't go crazy on it, and desert, just leave as is. So let's see what happens. Again, mid journey is somewhat of a guess. Uh, all of this is just trial and error, but let's see what happens. Okay, so as you can see, I'm not gonna noodle with this forever. I still have a blue robot, but if you look in between the two, this is like a really extreme blue robot, right? And then this one, it's kind of more of a subtle thing going on. I think you'd have to mess with the language, say with blue arms or one blue arm, you know, we could try that out. Okay, so if we look at these, I'm still not quite getting what I want. 
I think this one in the top right corner is getting closer though. Obviously the body's still blue, but it's kind of brighter blue on the arms. Um, again, this is, this is not an easy task with mid journey, but the main thing I want to show is this is how you use weighted value, especially when it comes to like settings and stuff. Maybe I should have tried this in the desert to show a better example but I'm just going off the cuff here. So you guys silly, I'm still going to send it. <laughs> uh, the next thing I want to show you, I only have two more tips. I'm going to kind of break these down a little bit um, is how to add text on something. So let's say with text on chest that reads and the way you do text is um, you can do it two ways. You can either do bracket quotations and then the text. So let's put robot quotations close bracket or you can leave off these brackets if you want to try that sometimes you get better or worse results based upon that so i'll show you what that looks like hopefully this works it's kind of a far away robot seed we'll see what happens okay so that did not work i'm going to take away my waiting this might be messing that up because I don't really care about this waiting as we saw. Let's just put a waiting of two here to see if that works. So again, mid journey is all about experimentation. Nothing is perfect. There are no absolutes. You also have to think about this to a certain extent. I'm putting in a giant futuristic robot. So in theory, this is a giant thing that is super far away. So you probably couldn't read the text. I think it, that's what it's trying to do here. It's trying to make like an LCD or here. It's trying to say robot on this sign. It's trying to say robot, things like that. But since this is a giant object, it's kind of, you know, doing it more accurately to what it would look like. The last thing I want to show just so this tutorial doesn't get too long is how you can use individual images outside of mid journey to influence your images. Mid journey basically accepts any URL with .jpg or .png at the end. But what I've found is easier if you just DM the mid journey bot an image. So I'm just going to drag this image in of the iron giant. Boom. It's already in there. If I click on it, right click and say copy link, mid journey understands that image link. And so what you do with that is at the beginning or end or wherever you want to put it, um, you paste that link. So it's a crazy long link, but then the most important part is you do dash dash I W and then you do a value of zero to one here for its weight. So here I'm going to put 0.5 and I W just means image weight. So I'm going to copy this whole thing again, plop it back in here. And now what mid journey is doing is it's going to say, okay, I have your whole text prompt, but I'm also going to try my best to look at the image that this link is based upon and do a 50% influence on that image. So what I see that this has influenced is kind of the shapes of this robot. So, for instance, kind of this shape of his body and then added maybe like a little light on his head, right? Again, this kind of shape up here versus if you go to our other ones, they're more blocky. This one is similar, but doesn't have those tapers going on. So let's just do this exact same prompt again, just to see what happens and pump it up to a value of one and see how that changes this. Okay, so as you can see, again, it is not going to crazy, crazy change your image, but it will do a little bit to push the needle forward in terms of the shape of your objects and composition, colors, potentially, etc. So I think this is, again, very powerful. And the most important thing about this whole thing is just post this image to the bot and then, you know, click on it, right click, copy the link. Okay, so that is pretty much it. I just wanted to show you some really useful tips and tricks for your text prompts here. There are a bunch more. I'll probably make uh, another tutorial about those, especially around kind of shot composition, how to change versions of the actual Mid Journey software, um, things to that nature. And again, here are those things we went over. AR, aspect ratio, uplight, seed, 
how to input text, and then IW is in relation to an image link for image weight. If you'd like this video and subscribe to the channel, that would help me out a ton. I'm trying to make these as quick and concise as possible. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below or anything I should look into further for Midjourney. And as always, if you're interested in any 3D models, head on over to thehappytoolbox.com. We have over 654 of them and counting. All right, we'll see you next time.